everyone and welcome to this video song frontier video my name is Jay Wakefield and today well I thought I'd actually give you a wee bit of something modern what we have here is an Acer Aspire 5742 laptop now this machine actually belonged to one of my colleagues and um, <clears throat> she was um, it was given to her on good authority that this machine was a wee bit um, well broken if I'm completely honest but I um, I actually restored I actually was able to back up the hard drive um, in it and recover all of her data uh, and copy it over to her new laptop. Now, I was then given this machine, which I thought was very generous, and, um, well, I actually um, powered it on at home and found that it worked. You see, I had recently, um, before this happened, <clears throat> the machine did have a problem whereby it would switch on, but then it would switch off again. And judging by the way the fans were running, I would say that that was down to the heat. Anyway, uh, taking this machine down to its component parts and actually giving the fan a wee bit of, um, <clears throat> giving the fan some, uh, well, giving the CPU some thermal paste and then rebuilding it actually helped a lot okay a couple of screws may have went missing but uh, let's just forget about that so what I've ended up with is a working Windows 7 laptop and the specs of this machine are it has a 2.4 gigahertz Core i3 processor now this is a first gen i3 but still, it's an Intel Core i-series processor. It also has 6 gigabytes of RAM, 1066 megahertz, quite a nice amount. A 640 gigabyte hard disk, again, very nice. 15.6 um, inch widescreen, Intel graphics, and a DVD burner. So, why don't we have a wee look at the machine, at the ports and what have you. <coughs> okay. Oh yeah. And um, also, I should probably point it out, it's bright red. Yeah. Anyway, um, <coughs> although in this light it kind of looks more purple than red, if I'm going to be completely honest. Um, because I am under a daylight bulb here. And on the video, for some reason... Certainly through my phone's um, screen, it looks orange. It's kind of a burnt orange colour. So it's it's not kind of pillar box, kind of Ferrari red. Um, it is kind of more of a scarlet, I would say. Anyway. So, going around the laptop, doing the usual kind of tour. We have a DCN. We have a vent. A good old-fashioned VGA port. We have Ethernet. HDMI out. So you can connect it up to your high-definition TV. Um, you know, so if you're... Um, you know, if, 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 um, if you have one of these, um, and you're a way to find out how to uh, plug it into your TV by going to your local computer shop and, and um, asking um, the guy behind the counter, which is... Uh, Usually some 20-something-year-old Packard Bell collector, you know, and you, you turn around to him and you say, Hey, have you, got a la have you got an adapter to plug my laptop up to my TV? Then, um, all you really need is um, a standard HDMI cable. Just as long as your television has HDMI on it. If it doesn't, then... Yeah, the poor Packard Bell collector is going to have to rustle you up something. Um, but um, if you have one of these laptops, and um, 
you know, you uh, are asked to make, it's an Acer. Anyway, there's a USB 2 part, and then we have microphone and headphone parts. Now, <clears throat> on the front we have a an SD card slot, which um, has a nice wee SD card slot blank in it, which I nearly lost the other day when I was uh, working on this computer. Um, and then, not much else. On the right hand side, we find two more USB ports and a DVD writer drive as well as a Kensington lock slot. And then just like all, uh, pretty much most modern laptops, um, I was away to say all, but um, my, my laptop actually still has parts in the back, but uh, it is a ThinkPad. Um, like a lot of modern laptops, there's actually no parts on the back of this one. Um, but there you can see the battery. So, what are we planning to do with this laptop? Well, I thought I would reinstall the operating system. <clears throat> because I decided to run an experiment that went horribly, horribly wrong. Anyway, but before I do that, um, I'd like to uh, point your attention to this. Yep, I bought this laptop a present, its very own Microsoft mouse. Um, because normally I use the same mouse with all of my systems, just usually have it around the table and then just kind of plug it in as and when I need it. Um, but the reason I'm using a separate mouse for this system will actually become a wee bit more apparent later on. You know, when I finish doing things like trying to plug the USB cable into the HDMI port. And that is something... You know, that is a problem that I do have with my main computer. It doesn't have HDMI, but it does have a display port, which can quite easily get in the road when I'm looking for somewhere to plug in a USB device. So, we have a look inside. And we find a, well, mostly full keyboard, complete with a number pad. Again, something my main laptop does not have. Do like the number pad. There we go. Um, I do like having a number pad. Brilliant for data entry. Um, there only seems to be one speaker on this machine. Um, I thought I'd forgotten to connect the other speaker. Um, but as it turns out, yeah, there, there is literally only the one speaker on it. Anyway, let's power on. Also, we have a webcam and a touchpad. That's, that's very nice. So what I'm going to do is the um, Acer Restore CD is already in the drive. So I will just boot to it. And even though it says the hard disk is connect, the hard disk is connected to an IDE channel, it just isn't. Just isn't, you know. So there we go. Uh, we're actually going into a, a Windows BART PE environment kind of thingy to run the restore program. So, while I wait for that to load up, <clears throat> uh, let's actually talk about what it is I'm wanting to use this computer for. Well, <clears throat> I actually teach vol voluntarily. Now, mostly I have been able to use the computers in the office to do that. You know, that's all very well and good. 
However, the machine that I normally use isn't always available and sometimes <clears throat> no machine which is kind of up to the job can be available. Sometimes I'm kind of left with a joke computer. So to simplify things, I've decided to start bringing my own machine in again. Um, I did that once before with the, the Ergo Ensys, but that was just way too slow. And eventually I just kind of got tired of the whole thing and just decided, to, you know what, yeah. And started using the machine in the office. But, um, <clears throat> you know, for um, some of my students who are just kind of learning programs, using, an, uh, using my own machine will be fine. For other students who are doing kind of basic computer use though, I'll probably still use an office machine because I'd like to keep this one running Windows 7. Because as well as for using it as a student machine, I also want to have, you know, kind of a modern-ish Windows 7 machine. And as this system comes with Windows 7, why not? Now this system did have a restore partition on it, but because I temporarily bottled the hard drive out of it, I deleted it. So now, I mean, it do, it, I mean, there's some machines that you know you can restore it with the DVDs, and it will actually make you your restore partition. I mean, I've had that with, um, you know, I have had that with machines actually that will do that. You know, if you restore using the DVDs to a different hard disk, it'll make you a restore partition, which is is very nice. But this one doesn't. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to select the language. I'm going to click continue. Is English your selection of UI language? Yes, it is. And I want to completely restore the system to factory defaults. The system will erase all existing data on the C drive. That's absolutely fine. Um, this option will return your computer to factory settings. All file settings updates and software installed since the computer uh, was first used will be deleted. We recommend the, uh, this recovery if your computer is infected by a persistent virus or malware, or if other recovery options fail. Recovery will require plenty of power. Please plug in your AC cord. Please detach all external storage devices attached to the system, for example, USB hard disks, flash disks. So this is going to restore. Okay, this part is going to take such a long time that instead of saying, oh, go make yourself a cup of tea, what I will say is, grow the tea plant yourself, raise a calf, raise a cow for them so that you can get the milk and grow some sugar beet plants so you can get a uh, sugar cane plant so you can actually get the sugar for your tea if you take sugar anyway i'll stop uh, yammering on and i will join you once this portion of the restore is complete because yes even after loading all of this on and the time it takes it still has to do a heck of a lot more Okay, I'm sorry this is uh, taken. I'm, I'm a wee bit back later on during the restore than I have been, but um, it's been on this screen for goodness knows how long. Um, and this is kind of like a so this is uh, the Acer software installation. It is, like I said, a lot like the Win Prep on older Packard Bell systems from the late 90s and the early 2000s. You know, it's installing all the applications one by one. And yes, it is very painful to to watch it install stuff like McAfee Security Scan. And the Wild Tangent games, all of which I will be deleting. Okay, I thought, I honestly thought that this was the out of the box experience time, but apparently it's not. Um, it was saying that it, it was uh, preparing the computer for first use again, but it turns out actually what it's doing is it's, in, it's not cleaning up after itself. What it's in fact doing is installing the cleanup.
Yeah. Isn't that just a very, very delicious example of Acer's consumer brand? Cleaning up after ourselves? No, let's just install it instead. Let the user deal with that. It'll be something else for them to install. Uh, they've got too much time on anyway. Especially with the processor that would eat them. Okay, well, here I am at um, the real out of the box experience after Acer installed the cleanup. Thanks, lads. Um, Acer. Acer. Um, <laughs> Yay, Acer. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna set on myself a, uh, an account for myself. I'm just gonna call this computer quite very simply Red Thing. Is that a red MSI motherboard? <laughs> nope. It's it's just kind of red all over. It's is yeah, very very red. I'm just gonna pause while I type my password in. Okay. So now I've got to accept the licensing terms, which um, somewhere along this, somewhere along the line, probably states that um, if I do not wish for Windows 10 to be forcefully installed on this computer, then I need to offer up a sacrifice of a squirrel. A squirrel. <clears throat> obviously, obviously now the Americans are, are in complete awe at the fact that I can turn the word squirrel into a word that has two syllables. Although, much to my ex's chagrin, I also seem to turn the word world into one that has two syllables. <laughs> I'm just going to log on to my Wi-Fi. Well... <laughs> yep. Hard drive. Hard drive. This computer has a 640 gigabyte hard drive backed up by 6 gigabytes of RAM and a Core i3 processor from Intel. Because I didn't re... I I didn't really want one from advanced micro devices. Or, yes, or Cyrex instead. <laughs> right. Cyrex. Okay, so now we've got to select what network it is. There's a picture of a house. Here is the Acer. I've got a big black mouse pointer. Um, as you can see, there's um, a few bits and bats on here. For example, we have the Acer Game Zone console, Acer registration, buy online, eBay, McAfee Internet Security Suite. Hey guys, I gotta drop out of the call for a few minutes. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay. Alright. Norton Online Backup and Skype. Okay, so let me summarize what this desktop is. Now, Skype. It's kind of there, but kind of not, because it does offer a very good free service. But, what you have here is advertisement, kind of register machine, advertisement, is it? commerce, register, commerce, 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 commerce. Everything on the desktop wants you to part with your money. That's depressing. I mean, you might say, oh, but gee, what about the uh, antivirus and the Norton Online Backup? McAfee is not free, it's just a trial, and even if it was free, who'd want to use it? And do you really think you're going to get Norton Online Backup for free? I don't think no. so. Um, if we look in the Start menu, there's Adobe Reader 9. That's, that's brilliant, that's... You've given us a, a bit of software that you can download online for free. Thanks, that's, that's really appreciated. Internet Explorer 64-bit. Internet Explorer, Microsoft Office 2010. I'm not sure if this is one of the ones that... Yep, it does. You do get Office Starter 2010. And do you know what? This is going to sound really stupid, but I quite like that. Because what Office Starter 2010 is, 
is a it's basically an ad supported version of Word and Excel. Now there's a lot of things that you can't do in it, but it's a good place, you know, it has a lot of the features that most people will actually use in Word. And maybe Excel. I've, I've not really tested Excel, I mean. But, um, you know, I do quite like it. I think Office Starter was actually one of the final good things that um, you could get with um, consumer-grade machines. And then Microsoft canned it. Um, Cyberlink Power DVD. I do believe that that actually comes through with the system. Usually they do put stuff like that. Acer e-recovery management, Acer update, identity card, welcome center, um, all the stuff to do with the computer. Um, my WinLocker and Shredder. Um, again, I'm not sure if that's free or not. Uh, McAfee, McAfee. Not an online backup. backup. NTI Media Maker 9, probably one of the worst CD DVD burning software packages I have ever used in my entire life. And then the bits of Wind the Windows Live suite that you don't really use. Windows Live Mesh, whatever that whatever that's supposed to do. And Windows Live Writer. But you know, I mean all the dodgy software aside, this is actually quite a good machine for what it is. And you know, I really do quite like it. It's a good um you know, it's it's got a good processor in it, it's got a sizable amount of memory, it's got a really nice giant hard disk in it. So there you have it, the Acer Aspire 5742. And that was me kind of restoring it. And um what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to install Office 2013 to it you know, for my student, and um, just get generally get this thing updated and running. So, with that, I'm going to end this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please feel free to subscribe to the channel, like us on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. You add else will follow. But until then, please join me for my next video. See you guys.